Good evening and welcome to our Wednesday midweek referral service. Thank God for another opportunity to be here to worship together and to lift his name high, to exalt him and to magnify him. Father, we worship you, Father, because you're good. You are great, Father, and you are greatly to be praised. In all the earth, Father, we come to say that you alone are God. You are King of kings. You are high and lifted up, Father. There is no one like you. You are high and lifted up. There is no one like you. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. You are high and lifted up. There is no one like you. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. My soul. Yeah. 
Thank you for who you are, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for who you are, Father. Mm -hmm. Anytime I call, you
want to praise you and exalt your holy name. Thank you for who you are. Thank you for uh, the abundance of your blessings over us for this week so far. We give you praise and we thank you because tonight the entrance of your word will give light and give understanding to the simple. We want to bless you and give you praise and thank you for all that you will yet do for the remainder of the week. And as your word comes forth, it will be comfort, it will be direction, it will be strength, it will be encouragement for everyone that listens to it to be able to uh, fulfill all their obligations for the remainder of the week. We give you praise and we thank you. We honor you and we adore you and glorify you. Thank you for what you are doing in our church. Thank you for what you are doing um, with everyone that is connected to uh, this assembly. We give you praise because we understand one thing and one fact that your thoughts are not our thoughts, your ways are not our ways as humans. But we thank you because you are elevating us to a place where our thoughts can align with your thoughts and our ways can be comported with your ways. We give you praise, we thank you, and we glorify you in the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for uh, being a blessing to us. We give you, give God thanks on your behalf. All right. This evening, I just want to go back and just do a little bit of rehash of um, what we learned on Sunday. And um, uh, we were talking about, if you, if you have been following, you will understand and you will discover that we have been um, uh, talking about uh, missions doable. We're talking about missions, outreach, uh, and all that God has called us because part of what God has called us to in this assembly, in this house, um, is to be able to reach out, to build a Jesus community. And how do we build a Jesus community without reaching out? So part of what God has ordained us as uh, a, a Jesus community to do is to be able to reach out and send the message of the gospel or the message of the good news to everyone that is uh, that we can reach, that God has enabled us to reach. And that's why we had about a five weeks um, uh, series on missions doable. And some of the things that we talked about uh, during uh, those missions that I want you to know is that we cannot all, um, we're all called, number one, and then, but however, we, are, we cannot all go uh, physically, and in reality, it really does not uh, make sense for us to all be able to go at the same time. Not that it doesn't make sense, but it is just not practicable for us to, be, to all be able to go at the same time, all right? And so we said uh, there are three ways, but however, every one of us, every one of you, every one of us, you know, uh, is called to missions, whether we do it, whether we know it or not, whether we accept it or not. Every one of us is called to the mission because of the great commission. We are called to mission because of the great commission. Jesus says, go ye into all the world. He wasn't talking to a few people or um, a select uh, group of people. He was talking to everyone that is a believer, everyone that has come to accept the saving grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. So he said, go ye into the world and preach the gospel, make disciples. Uh, for me, go and make disciples. That is what Jesus commanded every one believer. But as we established, uh, it is not practicable for all of us to uh, be on the mission field at the same time. So we say there are some within the context of this calling that will go. In other words, they will be physically present. You will go to uh, Malaysia. You will go to um, uh, Rhode Island. You will go to uh, Canada, wherever it is that God has called it to be, Africa, um, Asia, and, and all the other, you know, uh, good places where we can always reach people, all right? So, there are some of us that will physically go. That call, that going into the world, commands or imposes the necessity on a certain people or a group of us that must be physically present in all those places. And we go as missions. And thank God in this church, we go uh, as we, we, uh, uh, we 
Uh, we go for long missions, we go for short missions, we have missionaries all over the world stationed everywhere where we are uh, supporting in one way or the other, all right? So there are some people that will physically be, be there because th that, that call going into the world is uh, demanding upon them, demands that they be there in person. All right, that's the number one way of doing it. Number two way of doing it is that we can pray. All right? You cannot go there. You cannot be there physically. But it is uh, necessity is imposed on you to support those who go by prayer. You can pray. You can, you can pray and care uh, for them spiritually and take authority. And that means um, uh, we need as believers to be praying consistently for those who are lost, number one, all over the world, and two, for those uh, who are going. So you can pray for the lost, you can pray for those who are going, you can pray for the nations, all right? You pray for the nations and pray that the word of God will find free expression in all these nations so that men and women will be drawn to God and the saving grace of Jesus Christ, all right? And thank God also in this church, we do that prayer. Monday mornings, uh, Monday evenings, I'm sorry, we pray. We have people who are praying for the nations, we have people who are praying for missionaries and people who have committed uh, their life to doing that. And it is not just a select group in this church. We want every one person to be a part of that. All right? And uh, the third one is that you can send them. All right? So, number one, you can what? You can go. Number two, you can pray. And number three, you can send somebody. How do you send somebody? You don't just send somebody and say, hey, brother, we're just sending you, or sister, we just want you to be there, go and represent. No, we send by what we give. We send by resources, all right? So we send people out there. We let them know that Jesus, uh, Jesus wants them to be there, and Jesus will have us support them there. So you can, uh, uh, necessity is placed on some of us to go, Necessity is placed on some of us to pray. Necessity is placed on some of us to give, or maybe even all of us to give, all right? We can give to missions. And when we give to missions, we're not just only supporting the missionaries alone. We're also supporting the, sometimes we support the people, the indigenous people that are there that need help, all right? So because uh, 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 James was saying, what does it profit you when you see somebody who is in need and you just say, oh, you know, um, God bless you and, and you'll be fine. No, he said that's not how it is done. The way it is done is that you feed them. When you feed them, they are open to hear the gospel. And also, thank God, in this church, we have a mission pause where we separate 15% at least of our income or our revenue or our collection and those are just geared towards mission. So thank God in this church, all the three ways that you can go and reach people, we are participating or we are involved in all those things. If you need further information, you can just uh, reach out to uh, the church admin and we'll be able to uh, give you direction on what to do concerning that. But apart from going out and going overseas and all of that, there's also a mission that is here that we have all been called to. And that's what we discussed on Sunday. And I'll just go through a few of them and we can see uh, how, um, how we can participate. All right? We're given five steps in, uh, in, in this mission. And that is the workplace ministry, workplace mission, workplace outreach. All right? And we heard all those statistics on Sunday of what is happening and how that uh, Jesus gave uh, uh, 50 uh, parables, uh, 40 parables, and about 39 of them had to do with the uh, uh, workplace uh, uh, missions. He had about 120 appearances, thereabout, something like or 100 and something, and the majority of those appearances were marketplace. We saw how uh, when he wanted to raise his disciples and he wanted to have his disciples around him, he did not call the priests, he did not call the Pharisees, he did not call, uh, um, he did not call those people that walk in the temple, but instead he called the ordinary normal people who are involved with marketplace activity marketplace activity, all right? So he called the fisherman, he called the tax collector, he called, um, 
he called uh, the publican and all of that. Those are the people that he called to be able to reach out to uh, uh, spread this good news of the saving grace of God that has been manifested through him to the world or that, that was supposed to be manifested at that time through him to the world. So we see Jesus, uh, uh, we see, we see, um, we, we, we see this pattern and all that Jesus did to help us understand the importance of the marketplace ministry or the workplace ministry or how things are done. Now, for purposes of background, let me just read the scripture uh, from Acts 17. I'll read Acts 17 from verse uh, 16. I'll read Acts 17, 16, and 17. Acts 17, 16, and 17. Now, while Paul waited uh, for them at Athens, now there are some people who are minding him. So uh, now, Paul, uh, now while Paul waited for them at Athens, his spirit was teared in him. When he saw the city wholly given to idolatry, so Paul was in Athens, and he saw the city, he saw idols everywhere. He saw how, you know, they were worshiping idols, and, and God uh, was nowhere to be found there. So he saw them uh, 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 worshiping idols, and they were given holy completely. In other words, this is what their thing was, idolatry. All right? Therefore, he dis uh, therefore disputed he in the synagogue with the Jews and with the devout, per devout persons in the marketplace and in the marketplace with them that met with him, with them that met with him, with them that met with him in the marketplace. So let me give you a, big, a, a brief background on, on, on this scripture. Now, Paul, uh, at some point in his ministry, as he went around his missionary journey, because Paul was a missionary, he went around ministering and trying to establish the Jesus community in different areas or in different societies. And one of the places where he went to do this was in a place called Thessaloniki at the time, or Thessalonica, where we call Thessalonica, all right? And that was where the letter to the Thessalonians came uh, from and when Paul was sharing this gospel, he want, he was sharing this gospel with them at, in the temple, in their Jewish temple there, because the Jews were scattered all over the place and they had temples in different places. So Paul would go there from time to time to go and share the gospel and minister to the people. And and at at some point, uh, there was an outcry from the public. They didn't want him to be there because they felt uh, this Jesus thing was uh, a heresy. And they did not want Paul to continue doing so. The Jews stirred up the population against them, and they had to scurry him out of town and, and took him away from town. And from there, he went to another place called Berea. And when the same guys heard it that he was there, they came there again to stir up the crowd again, and he had to be hurried out of town again. And so he found himself this time at Corinth, I mean, at Athens, all right? And that's the basis of the foundation of how Paul found himself in Athens on, in this verse, verse, chapter and verse of scripture we're reading. All right? And so Paul got there. When he got there, uh, even though he was on the run, Paul still had time to go around the city and he was stirred in the spirit when he saw they were given to idolatry and he said, I must do something about this. Something's got to be done. All right? Now, but the strategy, one of the strategies he did, or one of the strategies, one of, one of the ways he saw that he could reach out to these people and confront this idolatry, or he could, um, he could speak to uh, the idolatry that was uh, going on in the city, was to number one, go to the temple and reason with the Jews, and reason with you know, those people who are in authority and those people who had you know, power and all of that, all right? And the next thing, the next strategy was to go to the public place. Uh, this place calls it the marketplace. There's a translation that calls it the, the public place. There's another translation that calls it the marketplace. He goes to the marketplace. And from Sunday, we understand that those places are called agoras, all right? And those are common things in those days, in the uh, first century of uh, uh, those uh, Greek world, where they have agoras. And, and, and these places are just uh, uh, designated for... Um, all kinds of things that happen. That is where life happens. That is where the life of every society or every community 
within those uh, 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 Greek, uh, 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 those places that had Greek influence. That is where life happens. That is where, uh, you know, uh, you buy and sell, trading, commerce happens there. Um, you have justice going on there. And, uh, and you have um, school or, or teachings and all of that. They all go, go on there. So in other words, in these agoras are the places where life really happens and where people come from all over the place. And so it is in this agora that you have access to as much people as you possibly can within the confines of time. All right? So Paul uses that strategy to go there. And so what is that for us today? What is that? What is, what is, um, what, 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 what lesson are we learning from this here? And one of the lessons that we learned from this here, one of the things I want to bring out here is I want to ask you one question today. Like Paul, is your heart being stirred for those who are lost? Do you have, do you have, do you have a passion? Do you have a heart for people who are lost? Do you have a heart for a city or for a society or for a group of people or for a nation? Do you have a heart? Is your heart being stirred in you? Um, the Bible says his spirit was stirred in him when he saw the city given wholly to idolatry. In other words, are you, uh, uh, what, what is your response to the plight of humanity? And when I mean plight, I don't just mean, you know, the sufferings of humanity alone, but I'm ju I just mean, you know, life generally as people uh, who are cut away from the commonwealth of Israel, like the scripture helps us to understand. In other words, people who are cut away from the very life or the very source of the life of Jesus Christ. Are we stirred in our hearts? Are we allowing the Spirit of God to stir us? In other words, are we allowing the Spirit of God to get us to a place where we can begin to be concerned and show interest in the destiny of people and groups around the world and even around us? All right? So Paul stirred by the Holy Spirit, and the Spirit was stirred, and he began to say, I'm going to do something. Now, number two, if your spirit is stirred, then you've got to do something about it. You've got to do something. And with Paul's story now, we understand that the lowest hanging fruit or the lowest hanging area or opportunity that you are going to have is going to be at the marketplace or this agoras, our own modern day agoras. And our own modern day agoras or our own modern day uh, marketplace or public place is primarily going to be in the place where we work. Workplace. And that is where the workplace ministry or the workplace mission comes in. And we understand from Sunday that workplace mission or workplace ministry does not only talk about, does not only refer to evangelism where, you know, you just go to work and all that you do is you begin to use your time, uh, your paid time uh, to just uh, be talking to people about the scriptures and the Bible and be preaching and be ministering and be, uh, no, that's not what it's all about. There's so much to it and we're going to see a few things as we go just before we end uh, this uh, uh, message now. All right? So why workplace? Why is it that important? Why is it that important? Why is it, why don't you just stay in the church and just want the people to just come in and just become uh, 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 born again and just become and we can share the word of God with them. Hey, number one, that wasn't Jesus' pattern. That was not Jesus' pattern. Now, the Bible says he had a custom of going to the, to the, to the, uh, to the temple. Um, but a lot of times, uh, it's difficult to see Jesus uh, ministering to people uh, in the uh, temple. All right? Now, what he told us is that he was sent to the lost sheep of the house of Israel, all right? And so you see him go out and go and do that. You see him go out every time. He was, he was on the way, he was walking, he was ministering, he was dealing with people, and, and, and this in outside the temple. His ministry was much more outside the temple than inside the temple. Now, in, on some few occasions, he did some miracles and he did some ministry in the temple. But for the most part, Jesus' work was on the go. Jesus' work was with people outside of the temple. He 
He visited people. He talked to people outside the temple. All right? He reached people at the places where he could find them, which was primarily in the places of their work. And that is why he told some, some, uh, some, some fishermen, all right, uh, to give him the boat. And he used their boat to minister to them. Where were they? Were they in the temple? No, he was, they were not in the temple. They were uh, uh, at their place of work, all right? So Jesus had a pattern of going outside the regular temple structure. Jesus knew that he was going to meet people outside of the temple, and therefore he took ministry to them. And so what we're saying here, or one of the things that was said on Sunday, is that we should follow the Jesus pattern of showing ministry, of doing missions outside the church. All right? Part of the problem that we have is that we're waiting for people to come to church before we minister to them, not knowing that we have to go. That's why the Bible tells us that we should go into all the world. We should go into all the world and preach the good news and deliver the good news. Go ye into all the world. Not go ye into all the temples and all the tabernacles. No, it's go ye into all the world. Go ye into all the world. In other words, I'm encouraging you this evening that one of the greatest things that you are going to do is to use the platform of your work as a place to reach people with the love of Jesus Christ with the saving grace of Jesus Christ because that was the main pattern that Jesus used to be able to reach the lost sheep of Israel. Like we said earlier on, Jesus did not get his disciples from the temple. All right? He got them from where they were walking. He got them from where they were walking. He saw them where they were walking and he got them from where they were walking. All right, so number two thing, why workplace ministry? Workplace ministry is a place for human flourishing. In other words, every advancement of the human race, everything that we have seen about the advancement of came as a result of work, came as a result of them doing business or them doing something or them uh, uh, creating something or them involving in work, all right? It is a place for human flourishing. In other words, it is our gifts, the gifts that we have most in life flourishes where we work. In fact, we all need those gifts to be able to function in one place or the other. That's why so many of you are good at computing, right? Uh, uh, some, some of you are in the computing world, all right? Some of us are not that gifted. We're not that smart or intelligent to be able to understand anything about tech and all of that. So you guys are, you know, there's so many of you who are gifted in that. That's your gift. There's so many of you who are in medicine, who are in nursing. There's so many of you who are accountants. There are people who are engineers, all right? Those are gifts. Those are things that God has gifted us to be able to advance human flourishing. There are some of us uh, that are mechanics, master mechanics. There are some of us... Um, uh, 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 that work as administrators. There are some of us that work in human resource. There are some of us uh, that are gifted in arts and, and, and furniture and furnishing and all that kind of thing. So we have all kinds of gifts. And all these kind of gifts are always, are mostly, most likely, and always will be uh, the tool to which we are dispensing our work. And because of that, we have the ability to be able to use this gift, not only to be able to make, um, uh, uh, to, not only to be able to uh, uh, earn a salary or some, um, uh, 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 some, some kind of uh, 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 money or something like that, all right? It is also, in addition to earning a salary or making a living or earning a living, those gifts are also to help us to be able to improve human flourishing and be able to use that to reach out to people. Because the abundance of the people we are going to reach are going to be the people that, will, that we will come across, not in the four walls of our church, but on the outside. And we are supposed to use our gifts to be able to reach those people and be a blessing to them. And number three, 
why our place of work is that it's our place of work that will meet the most people that will be in need. The most people that will be in need of help. The most people that will be in need of a savior. The most people that will be in need of love. The most people that will be in need of a relationship. The most people that will be uh, in, in all kinds of things. They are all out there. And that's why Jesus says you should go to the highways and the byways and compel them to come. All right? Not come and then uh, they will come. No. He said go to the highways and go to the byways because that is where those people that need the love of God rest, reside the more. That is where the people you are going to meet that will need a relationship, that will need a savior, that will need a touch of God, that will need to see God. That's where they reside the most. And that is where our light is going to shine out the brightest. And that is why we need to be able to be present. And when I mean present, not, I, I don't just mean being physically present, we also need to be spiritually sensitive to all the human needs, especially in a place of work, because that is where those people are mostly concentrated. And so we can reach them with the love of God. We can reach them with the message of the good news. We can reach them, you know, by touching them in one way or the other so that the glory of God will cover the earth as the waters cover the sea, like Isaiah prophesied. All right? So what are we saying? What am I saying? I'm saying the reason why this is so important, just like Pastor Bank emphasized on Sunday, the reason why workplace ministry uh, is so important is number one, that is a pattern that Jesus used. Number two, that is the place for human flourishing. And number three, that is the place where we will reach the most people for Jesus. And if you have... If you, if, you, if, you, if, if you begin to put this in mind and you begin to practice it and your heart begins to get, uh, uh, you know, concerned and, 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 and stared towards reaching people, I want you to begin to see your work as your platform for ministry. It is your platform for ministry. It is your platform for displaying God. It is the billboard by which you can express the goodness of God and all will see and become a witness to who God really is. To who God really, uh, really uh, is and how God really wants to reach people with the saving grace of his love and kindness and his goodness. Because a lot of times you are the only Jesus that people will see. You are the only Bible that the world will read. And where do they read it most? At the place where they will see you the most. The place where most people spend the majority of their life or their times of their life. Like it has been said, you, during your working life, at least a third of your life is spent at your place of work. And that is why it should be a platform for you to be able to display the love of Christ, the goodness of Christ, and the saving grace of Jesus Christ to all. So this evening, I just want to encourage you. Uh, it might not be a message to tell you, oh, you know, um, this might not be a message to tell you, oh, you know, you can, uh, uh, to heal your wounds, uh, to, to, to say, to help you with your financial troubles and all of that. But I'm telling you, this is one message that is really, really, really important. You know, the concern for the lost, the reaching out to the lost. And we must know that we have all been called and we have a part to play in the, rich, in, in the gospel, reaching to the uttermost ends of the world. Uh, so thank you so much for listening to me this evening. I just want to thank God for you and bless you for your family. I just want to pray for you this evening that God will stir your hearts. God will stir your hearts. God will, uh, the Holy Spirit will be able to reach out to you and begin to put that yearning in you to be able to reach out to people and know that your work is a mission post. Your work is a place where God has posted you to reach out to people and be able to bring that saving uh, grace of Jesus Christ to bear in the life of everyone that listens to you. Father, this evening I just want to thank you for everyone that is listening to me. I give you praise and I thank you, God, in the name of Jesus. Thank you for your word. 
thank you for uh, your purpose and your plans for us. Uh, you say your thoughts for us, and that is all of humanity, your thoughts for us, our thoughts of good and not of evil, to bring us to an expected end. This evening, in the name of Jesus, we thank you because you will stir our hearts to begin to desire to reach out, to begin to see our work as our platform, to begin to see uh, our gifts as our posts or the outposts that you have sent us to reach out to the world. This evening, I just begin to thank you, O oh God, in the name of Jesus, that you help us to be able to begin to take seriously all that you have deposited in us. Uh, that like Moses, we will not despise the gifts that you have given us, but we will appreciate them. We will embrace them, appreciate them, and deploy them to the glory and honor of your name. In the name of Jesus, we've prayed. Amen. Amen. Thank you for listening to me this evening. I just want to thank God for you, and I give praise for, to God for uh, his uh, grace upon your life and his strength upon your life. Um, if you have any gift for us and all of that, just go to our website and uh, go church uh, website and uh, put any of your gifts there uh, through that this evening and, you know, anytime you want to. All right? So thank you so much. I uh, just thank God for you, and I will be seeing you uh, next week, uh, Sunday, by God's grace for our celebration service. God bless you.